Hi everyone, it's Tanya from Cup of Cha. In this episode, I'm going to explore two oolongs from Taiwan. And these two oolongs are really fantastic examples of the amazing oolongs that Taiwan produces. And it makes them a world leader when it comes to oolong in the spectrum of flavors and aromas and um, that you can find in oolongs within Taiwan. They have been so innovative while still maintaining their very traditional methods. Um, they have become very innovative with their different types of tea plants and also in their different styles of production as well. So let's start looking at the um, two oolongs that I've got here. The first one we're going to look at is actually the Oriental Beauty. It is known by many different names. Um, on my website it is, I call it by Bao Ho, um, and it's also called Champagne Oolong and Braggart's Oolong and Five Colours Oolong. And, and it really has all these names because of the history of the tea itself. Um, as with any tea, it, there's always a legend behind the tea. And behind the Oriental Beauty, it is that the little green leaf hopper, grasshopper, had visited the tea farms and all the farmers turned around and said, oh no, our farm crops are, our tea farm is um, ruined, this crop is ruined. But one tea farmer decided, what the heck, I'm going to process this tea and still take it to market. And he did, and he got a really great price for it because of the flavor of that particular tea and the aroma. And so, therefore, Braggart's tea. Um, the five colors is because with Oriental Beauty, uh, a quality Oriental Beauty should display the five colors. And that is white, red, black, brown, and green. Now, just to give you a indication, I'll just, I have, bring that up, oops. <laughs> I'll bring that up closer for you to have a look at, and you can see all the colors there as well. It's never good to spill some. <laughs> and it's also known as the champagne of the teas because of the quality of the tea. Um, there's different, um, there is different reasons and legends behind the reason why it was called Oriental Beauty. Um, one queen that was so delighted by it that she called, that was the name she gave the tea. But like I say, every tea, a good tea has great legends. And as you guys, if you watch me regularly, you all know that as my father says, don't let facts get in the way of a good story. So I don't mind a bit of legend stuff anyway. But let's have a look at the tea itself and the type of um, uh, qualities that you should be looking for that if you're looking at purchasing this tea. As you could see, I showed you the five colors that you should see in this tea. It is picked during the summer months. So there's just a few weeks there in summer that this tea is picked. It's not picked any other time of the year. And if it is, it doesn't really qualify as the best it can be. It is from um, the northwestern side of Taiwan, uh, where the very famous regions are for this particular tea. The tea bush should be the Jinsin Da Pan tea uh, cultivar. I have seen other um, oriental beauties being made from different tea plants, but you're going to end up with different flavors, slightly different flavors and aromas with that. And of course, the reason why it's a summer pick tea is because they wait for the little green leaf hopper to arrive and have a little nibble at the tea plant. And it's because that nibble at the tea plant and then the plant's reaction to the grasshopper biting on it is what creates the flav flavors and the aromas behind this tea. So I'm going to brew up the tea, some of the tea now so you can see it. I would always recommend with this tea is to half fill the teapot. Um, this teapot is a 160, 60 mil teapot. It was half full. This is actually now my second infusion on it. I drank the first infusion while I was getting ready. 
Um, the first infusion you would do for 60 seconds. This particular infusion we're going to do for uh, 40 seconds. And then the third infusion I would do for 60 seconds again. And the fourth I would do for 90 seconds. So this is, you get the four infusions from it as any good quality um, tea. You have the multiple infusions. So we're coming close up to that 40 seconds now. And you can see the color of the tea as I'm pouring this. I'm going to pop it into this one here for clarity. Now the, this particular tea is, the picking of this one is a bud and two leaves. Very high competition standard is sometimes a bud and one leaf. And it is possibly, the biggest competition winners are probably the most expensive tea from Taiwan. And it can command hundreds of thousands or oh, thousands of dollars per kilo for the top quality stuff. But once you've tried some really great stuff, uh, tea, Oriental Beauty, you understand the reason why some of that really expensive stuff gets the money they do. And as you can see, this beautiful color, it's almost like a reddy amber color there. And I can, I can smell, for me it's like a Manuka honey, so I'm from in Australia so Manuka honey is something that we have a lot other people have mentioned a wild honey a wild honey type um, aroma and then there's like the very ripe peachy type of fruits now the thing with the um, oriental beauty it is a it's a very strong aroma on it a very good quality one will have a very good aroma on it but it doesn't attack you very quickly in the palate. It's like the lingering after effect of a very light tea. So we'll just try it. It's a great tea. <laughs> I simply, I'm sitting here and it's a shame you can't smell this aroma that's coming off this tea. It is just so beautiful. Now the tea itself is only oxidized up to around 65%. So it is in the slightly higher oxidization level, as you can tell by the color of the tea. And it is a strip roll, so it's just carefully rolled tea. And like I say, it, the picking standard on this is um, a bud and two leaves. So I'm just going to find a nice example to show you. So here we go. This is a really great example of, as you can see, close enough there. It's like a bud and two leaves there. So that's what you would be looking for. And as you could see earlier, the, the tea itself and how it was rolled. And this is exactly how the tea will start to look as it opens up as well. So it's a very rich coppery color leaf then that once it's been infused there. So that's the first one of the teas that I wanted to show you. I'm just going to have another sip of this one. The next tea, I really, I really like this tea. So, and I'm particularly proud of this tea. The one important thing that I forgot to mention is this tea just recently won a silver award um, down at the Royal Hobart um, Agricultural Show at the Fine Food Awards. So I'm very proud of that. Um, as I say, it is a beautiful tea and worthwhile. And the link for this particular tea is in the description below. So get in quick because there's limited stock on that one and it's worthwhile if you haven't tried a really good quality oriental beauty and you wonder what people um, why people talk about it so much have a um, buy some and try it yourself I um, also would strongly suggest that you could have this really um, goes well with chocolate cake or afternoon tea or morning tea it's I wouldn't tend to use it as a breakfast tea I tend to use it as a really nice refreshing afternoon tea so the next tea we're going to look at 
is the Baozhong, which again is um, a very famous tea from Taiwan. It is a lightly oxidized tea. It's only about 8% oxidized. So sometimes people will think of it as a green tea, but it's not a green tea at all. It is slightly oxidized. So it doesn't have the grassiness or the vegetative notes of um, a green tea. It is the first stage of those classic floral oolong flavors and aromas coming through with a slight orchid type of floral. So this is the leaf itself. Again, like the Oriental Beauty, it is a strip leaf. So it's stripped rolled. So this is the strip. It's not the little ball shape at all. I shouldn't be wearing a black jacket, but it is cold here. So it's just been strip rolled there, 8% oxidized. So when it's oxidized, it's brought through and it's fluffed and the oxidization happens, then it's rolled and then it is just put through a light baking drying machine. And that's about all that happens to it. Paojong is um, like a green tea, should be drunk fairly quickly or consumed very quickly. It's also history called it the wrapped tea. And that was because in the early days when they would ship this tea um, across the waters to America, they found it didn't hold very well. So in the great big tin boxes, uh, tea boxes, chess. So what they did is they wrapped it up into smaller paper wrapping and hence it became the wrapped tea. In Taiwan, my mentor also told me that Baozhong is famous for when the students want to study, they have some Baozhong with them and they keep it close and it's supposed to help them study. So for those students out there that are studying, this is worthwhile having, um, trying to see if it does help your study. So the temperature now is 93 and with this tea as well, I had been drinking this one. So I'm actually on a second infusion with this one as well just like the Oriental Beauty. So I've sort of been drinking while I was getting ready for this video. So because this is a second infusion, we're only going to go for 30 seconds on this one. With the Baozhong, again, um, yeah, with the Baozhong, sorry. Again, it is like fill half the teapot. The first infusion is 60 seconds. The second infusion is about 30, 35 seconds. The the second infusion and then the third infusion is about 45 seconds and then the fourth is 60 seconds again so so i get very spoiled here i do love my taiwanese oolongs this one is a beautiful one from wenshan um north northeastern right at the very top of Taiwan up near Taipei there. And this is a very famous region for the Baozhong. As you can see, it's the color is a lot more um, like a yellow, pale yellow color there on that one. This is very aromatic. There's a lot of floral notes in this one. Like I say, more like the orchid florals. So those are two teas that I feel represent the diversity of the oolongs that you can get from Taiwan. And so this is just an introduction to some of the oolongs and I'm going to take you down a path of learning a little bit more about the Taiwanese oolongs. I hope you will learn to love them as much as I love them. I find them uh, a fascinating um, tea family that is an amazing um, family of tea to explore and I love the things that I uh, love all the new innovative ways that Taiwan will take a different cultivar try a different process on it and come up with new flavors and aromas so most important thing here is like just to recap with the oriental beauty if you're looking for a really good quality oriental beauty it should be a summer pick um, it should be from the cultivar Jinsin Da Pan. It should be from Taiwan for it to be called Oriental Beauty. And, um, and it should be bitten by the little green leaf hopper. And with the Baozhong, it is, um, they usually, 
it can be picked a few times throughout the year so it's not any particular season though I will say spring and winter are probably two of the better seasons from Taiwan for this style of tea here um, Wen Shan is definitely the area for Baojong so that's where I'd be looking for a good quality one um, and it is made elsewhere but that is the region that it's best suited to it um, and the other thing is the usually the cultivar is the Jinsin Oolong which is the most common cultivar there in Taiwan um, but you do find other cultivars used for it as well. All I would say is sometimes Four Seasons um, cultivar doesn't, Four Seasons Spring doesn't always hold the, doesn't have a, the best of the shelf life, not like the good, hardy and reliable ginseng oolong. So I will have details and links to these teas below. And yeah, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It's free. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me the thumbs up. If you have any questions on Taiwanese oolongs, please just pop them in the, in the questions below. I'm happy to answer any questions on Taiwan because it is definitely my all-time favorite region for the oolongs. And I will see you next week. Bye for now.